Bodyguard, the new Dem Mercurio series starring Richard Madden and Keely Hawes. We had the first two episodes over the bank holiday weekend. We um, Richard Madden stars as Dave, Dave slash David Budd. I um, thought it was Bird at first. I couldn't no, understand Bud. a word of it. It's Bud. Bud. It's like the it's... wire all over again. For you. It is, yeah. I need subtitles. Um, our Scottish listeners, Gary's views do not yeah. reflect. <laughs> So, Richard Madden plays Daniel Budd, a... Um, David Budd. David Budd. See, Gary's rubbing off on me now. Like, <laughs> a... I love how it's always going, but we'll even you, mate. I'm getting my lawyers onto that. I'm not rubbing off on you at all. <laughs> I just say not like that. Anyway, should we start again? David Budd. <laughs> <laughs> Who is on the phone now? It's David. It's Dave Budd. So he is a former soldier in Afghanistan. Um, we learn that he's sort of now working in protecting, like, visiting foreign dignitaries and the stuff and and the sort. He is estranged from his wife and ch- children due to his PTSD. And the opening scene of um, the first episode sees him basically foil a uh, bombing on a train, a uh, suicide. Uh, bomber is in the toilet and he is able to sort of coax her out of the toilet and get her to sort of not blow people up basically do you want me to insert my train knowledge here or not wait really to but you're going okay. to aren't you no 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 i'm asking and carry on gary's train knowledge will be coming up in due course <laughs> gary's train knowledge has been delayed thanks to leaves on the line <laughs> Without Gary's we'll be... replacement knowledge. <laughs> uh, I don't feel well. <laughs> As a result, he is uh, sort of, uh, of his bravery and his, his what have you, he is reassigned to protect the Home Secretary, Julia... Montague. Montague, I was going to say Morris, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Margulies. <laughs> She is uh, played by Keely Hawes and is a sort of very, um, you know, she's full of sound bites about fighting terror and deploying troops and basically everything David doesn't stand for. And there's the sort of the friction between them. And it's sort of, without going into too much detail in the sort of the first and second episodes, it is a sort of who can trust who, basically. The, the tagline is the threat is closer than you think. And there's there's insinuation that... Julia's taking keeping things from him. He might want to do something sinister to her because he sees her as the person who sort of sent him to war and mm. then he's come back and he's basically lost everything. So because um, me and Luke have both reviewed this for the website in, in, in separate reviews, Gary, you're, you, you take the floor. I have not felt this scared watching a television show since Luther. And I mean the early Luther, the good Luther. Uh, particularly the episode where the guy was coming out under the bed. I thought that was a, an absolutely moment. The mood, the pitching, the, the sound that you get and don't get is absolutely fantastic. I think Richard Madden is perfectly playing the kind of robot at work and then the emotional other part when he's not at work. The scenes where he is standing still watching in the um, home office almost as well it's listening in through doors i know it's not but it's the way it's portrayed like the fact that you're viewing everything through him and then you step into the room and you hear the conversations about the threat levels and everything uh, i just love the feel of it uh, obviously that 25 odd minute scene on the train is an epic um and I, I can't think of another single scene to me so well done in a long time Nothing sticks in my mind. I know there were several moments in Line of Duty. It may be interviews. Isolate you saying that and use it all the time. Nothing sticks in my mind. I literally was on the edge of my seat. I had no idea what was coming. And I think in the second episode, they managed to up the tension and then deliver, you know, the, the fantastic scene where she's attacked in the car. And again, the brutality of it and the, the, the blood and the gore. And, you know, just I've not seen that again since Luther. Um, and I know that, 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 that kind of did that as well. Really shows you the violence. That was one scene I really didn't see coming, the the yes. bullets hitting the car, because you feel like it's in the middle of this discussion that they're having about, because she's managed to get his son into like a special school, yeah. and then she reveals that she 
knew the name of his son's school prior to there. There's an attack in the second episode on the son's school. And you think this, this scene is just going to end, you know, there's a bit of tension in the air, and then suddenly the bullets start raining down. And there's and bullets you... in the air. Mm. Yeah. And I just, I felt that was, like, that was more, because I sort of knew that there was this scene coming in the fir- at the beginning of the first episode. Luke had sort of insinuated yeah. it. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it and, and everything, but I, yeah. I think that, that shock of, the I bullets think you... raining down. And I, I have to say, though, I did guess who the shooter was. I think they. Oh, yeah, yeah I think that was. That, that... Did that quite. But I, I suppose that wasn't meant to be like a twist or anything. I saw the. I've seen the first episode three, maybe four times. Maybe four times now. Oh, okay. At the, at the screening, I really liked it, but I really struggled to care about David Bird. I just saw him as this another damaged character on another TV drama. And it hadn't really dawned on me until I watched it the second time that that was really the point of yeah. you know, the whole thing. My only minor niggle about the second episode was I didn't appreciate the speed at which their relationship sped up. Um, mm. And I don't know whether that's a fault of... I wrote that in my episodes. review as well, Luke. Yeah, I know. I read that. And it is a good review. You need to go to the website to read my review of the first one and Matt's more eloquent review of the second one. It's not a relationship, it's just sex at the moment. Okay, oh, darling. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel the collateral Isolate that coming. At the moment, it's two people oh, who yeah. shared a traumatic yeah. moment who are now connecting. And it's not like they're buying each other presents and, 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 and whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. All no, right. but seriously. But I mean, I if, in the th- if in the third episode she suddenly comes around and like, no, we shouldn't be doing this, or he does, it's not a relationship. I, I can see what you're both saying in terms of, as, uh, as sort of believability in terms of like yes. when there is... Uh, an accident, you know, you, you sort of go to the people closest to you. Sure, yeah. And, no. They bonded. Um, they bond, yeah, something like that. But I think, in terms of it being a drama, it almost happened too quickly. Yes. Um, yeah, I would I'd agree have with liked that. that scene after the attack to end with the hug that, you know, he gingerly went to put yeah. his arms around her. And that, because you had the hand holding, you had the first sort of hint that something was going to happen was when he took his shirt off in the first episode to give to her when the sort of oh, now fired assistant had to spill coffee all over her you know you get these little moments that would then build up to maybe at the end you know the halfway point but now i suppose the the sort of the sexual relationship between them is more to do with you know the fact he is now spying on her at the end of the at the end of this episode we saw like his boss and the head of the counterterrorism gina Gina mckee mckee at the end said you know you now need to spy on her because we don't trust her there's something wrong you know she's not a woman to be trusted and we've heard that already from the the girl who she sacked had said that to a journalist in the first episode so there's something and and she did she did know about the school before Mm. it happened and she said don't do anything that's true yeah. Anyway, uh, Gary Train. Train. Okay. So obviously that first twenty-five minute is a is a very kind of heightened uh, and tense scene in the train, which uh, you know is a sort of a, an attack on on a train heading towards London. Um, and I spoke to a friend of mine, Fred Martin, called Lee Bonnet, who works in the train industry. Um, what, and sorry, told me a lot. What's the name? Lee Bonnet. He works in the train industry and he told me a lot of things. But basically, most of that scene is quite realistic, um, apart from a couple of little bits. Number one, he said, there's absolutely no way they can open the doors while the train is going. If somebody pulls like that little bit, what it does is it puts the brakes on and you can only open the door once the brakes are fully deployed. The second thing he said that was inaccurate was you would never announce over the tannoy can people move compartments, he said. Yeah, I he, thought that, actually. He, yeah, and I, I, I think you probably did that for dramatic effect. There are a few things that he said they probably did for dramatic effect. What, but in obviously, the drama? Yes, probably. Yeah, yeah, no, but no, the things that wouldn't be realistic because they don't look particularly good. And the other thing he said, you know, he said uh, this is a realistic part of, of, of British train travel. There's no way her finger would not have hit that buzzer. The amount of times a train jerks mm. around, 
you know, she had her finger literally over it. And I was thinking, all they've got to do is, is go through a, 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 a dodgy connection and that's it, they're gone. Only Jeb Mercurio had, a, had, a, had your mm. train advisor. Well, then, we are the only podcast I, I know like... that has a train expert. Uh, and thank you very much, yeah, Lee, for that I, knowledge. I feel like that might, you know, be a regular thing. If... I thought you were going to say, I feel that all might be cut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if we review the film Unstoppable, then maybe we can get it back on. Although that know, film but... should have been called Stoppable. Cause well, that's right, yeah, because it... Spoilers! The the film. <laughs> if it was Unstoppable, then they shouldn't have bothered. Can it, and should it, maintain the big set pieces? Because uh, I wrote, before having seen episode two, that I my assumption was that it wasn't going to be this Spooks-esque type drama where there's a big disaster every week and a big set piece and I appreciate those and I like those for just pure excitement but should it and can it maintain those for the next four that we've got because if he's literally her action hero every week I think as much as I appreciate Jed's style of writing it's going to grate on me a tiny bit I think it is like a line of duty where you get like you, you get it punctuated throughout the series, and I I feel like the the two big set pieces in the second episode you needed both to sort of further the plot. You know, you had this second terrorism attack yeah. near the school, which would which was needed to sort of further her political agenda and sort of putting more of a focus on um, the uh, MI5 ahead of the police. And then the set, the attack on her car was sort of for his friend to go, you know, you, you, you've got this job now, you need to sort of finish it off. And then for the Gina McKee and Pippa Haywood characters to basically give him this covert mission that wouldn't have worked without those two incidents. I think now, I mean, I don't know, but I'm assuming no. maybe three and four, you'll get a calmer period and then it will hype up the tension. Um, but like, if you but, look at Line of Duty, he does that in that as well. There'll be periods... Well, like, it not, always begins with a big... Yeah, I was going to say, you get the big scene at the beginning, didn't you, yeah. of, every se- of every season so series? Sorry. Usually at the first uh, the first episode, you get it at the beginning and the end, don't you? Because you get yeah. some... Like, for example, Series 2, where you had the big stuff with Keely Hawes at the beginning and then Jessica Rain gets pushed out the window at the end. Yeah. Do you like him as a character? I don't think you're supposed to. I think you're supposed to... You're supposed to realize. I mean, he's. He, I suppose you're supposed to realize he's broken. Um, I feel. I feel like his wife treats him quite badly. I. Ho- I hope Sophie Rundle gets more to do because I, I like her as an actress. I did say this I in do. my review. Is that the I wife? The wife, yeah. But I. I. I would. I don't know. Like is is an interesting term. I would say he's he's an interesting character to follow. He's like the strong, silent type. He's someone who obviously has these issues. I think your issue, your, not your issue, but your point is, is there some way, someone you can sort of latch onto? Because he, he as a main character isn't like a sort of relatable, you know, he is good at that bodyguard job because he is very yeah. reserved and isn't a man, is a man of few words and is surrounded now by these politicians who are... He, he, he has a very, very professional way of doing his job he is trained and is alert and he could literally stand in that room uh, you get that and as i say that's why it's one of my favorite things you get this vision of him just standing there all day seven eight nine hours just looking for something that doesn't look right for one little thing so believe it or not this sunday we are halfway through uh bodyguard already um so episode three of six this sunday nine o'clock we urge you to check out the other two uh on I play it or on your recordings yeah. if you were sensible enough. On your recordings. And yeah. uh, and read the views at the website, thecustardtv.com.